Pat, we're here to talk about the safety culture of the MU-2 airplane. And the MU-2 is one of those airplanes that kind of got a bad reputation a little bit uh, in the past several years. But that has all been turned around and it's now become a very safe airplane. To what do you attribute the turnaround in the safety culture? Well, there are a number of things I think that attribute to that. Uh, the first and foremost, I think, are our owners and operators. Our owners and operators are a, a great, wonderful, cohesive group of people that really want the safety. They wanted to change what the public's opinion of the airplane was years ago. So they agreed to comply with the Special Federal Aviation Regulation 108, which requires them to train annually. Now, several years ago, we did some interviews with people that related to that. And what was the change? How was it going to work? How was the training going to modify the thinking process and the safety culture of those people? And over the period of time since the issuance of the SFAR in 2008, with a 2009 compliance date, we have seen a miraculous change in the safety and the safety thinking within that group of people. We have a great saying, which is, if it's so easy to do it right, why would you ever do it wrong? And I think a lot of our people have bought into that now. We've seen a complete cultural change in the way our owners and pilots fly the airplane, the way they train in the airplane, and their attitude toward training. And that was one of the biggest changes we saw. Forcing you to fly in training is a tough thing for any manufacturer to deal with. But in the case of Mitsubishi, it was something that we'd been requesting since 1991, was to put a type rating on the airplane, which we didn't qualify for, to do a FITS program, which was not mandatory. So we were kind of stuck in a hole until the SFAR came along. Unfortunately, it took some accidents, it took some bad reputation, it took a couple of letters from Congress to the FAA to make it happen, but Mitsubishi backed that process all the way along. What are some of those special training items that your pilots and owners need to complete? Well, first of all, we have 28 maneuver profiles that they must fly every year. Those 28 maneuver profiles take them through the full flight envelope of the aircraft, including accelerated stalls, which many pilots haven't done since their commercial training days. The other is a very comprehensive curriculum of ground activity, which covers all the emergency procedures, covers the systems of the aircraft in depth. And we have some very, very talented people around the country that are teaching those programs, including Simcom, if I may, that has two flight training devices that are level five, and they're authorized to do the training in. But the annual training aspect of it is really what's changed everything. If you're forced to go back to training on an annual basis, you're going to refresh your memory. You're going to refresh yourself on procedures and maneuvers. But the compliance aspect of it, which is when you go to training, you must do this. You must use the checklist that's provided by the manufacturer. You must go through the curriculum, which, by the way, is standardized throughout the country. That does get people all thinking in the same direction, and that's what really makes the difference. You know, you talk about special training, annual training. That might give somebody the impression that the MU-2 is an unusually complicated airplane to fly. Is it a complicated airplane to fly? And how do you address that perception? Actually, it's just the opposite. The airplane's a pussycat in flight. It's a wonderful airplane to fly. It has great dynamics, great aerodynamics. The systems are easy to understand and operate. And it's a very, very stable platform. Stall maneuvers are a good example of that. The airplane is a very docile install and stall recovery. It's very hard to get the aircraft in a situation where it's not giving you a docile reaction to, say, a stall maneuver. The people that fly them absolutely love them. They believe there's no other aircraft like it that handles like it and flies like it. The spoilers that we use for roll control, people will call them unique. I don't think they're unique because they're in several other applications, including the Beast Jet, the B-52, many fighter aircraft very reactive, very easy to fly, very easy to understand, and provide a very stable platform. So you've built an entire safety culture around this airplane, and the people who fly it talk about that a little bit. We have, and I think that's the thing we're the most proud of. We don't just talk about the safety culture, we actually live the safety culture. And I think for any aircraft manufacturer, or any pilot flying any airplane, I think you have to buy into the safety culture. You have to do things the way that they're meant to be done. You have to comply with the rules, comply with the regulations, and the limitations of the aircraft. Our building of the safety culture has been a long process. It's taken us since 2006, actually, with the introduction of the training program, which ultimately became the SFAR, to get everybody complied, 
to get everybody in on the program. And now what we're doing with programs like the Prop Seminar, the Pilot Review of Proficiency Seminar, is to build on that safety culture. We talk safety at these events, we talk safety all the time. We don't just talk about it, we go out and we live it. And then we watch our customers, we watch our owners and operators, we make suggestions to them, we fly with them if necessary to give them a little help in areas where they may not be as proficient as they should. But we really walk that safety culture through to its end. Well, Pat, it's been great talking with you. Thanks for taking some time to talk with us, and we look forward to learning more about the safety culture on the MU2. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Aero TV is brought to you by True Blue Power Advanced Lithium Ion Main Chip Batteries feature proprietary nanophosphate technology. They deliver three times the energy density and are more than 40% lighter than lead acid or NICAD alternatives. RTCA tested, FAA certified, available to OEMs today.